everyone. Welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. Today's episode, digital drawing. Digital drawing is something that I think is moving more and more and more to the mainstream, where before, if you said that I do most of my work in digital format, um, it'd be a little different. Folks really didn't know how to take that. But with the advent of technology now, the way it is today, at least everyone has a smartphone, it, it seems, or a tablet, or both, or multiple ones. Um, drawing digitally is becoming more and more popular, more accessible, and the technology that you use to actually work with has become so easy to use that all you really need is a finger to do it. Uh, of course, the tablet too, but that's what we're doing today. Uh, we're going to be drawing digitally. Now, for you at home, what that means is you can follow along with everything that I'm doing with just a standard pencil and paper and eraser. You don't really need all of this stuff I'm showing you. But like I said earlier, though, how popular this medium has become has really led us now with 80, almost 80 shows that we've done uh, to this point. We've never really done anything digital. Early on, there were some, but not in this format, at least. Not actually showing the stylus in my hand and the movement of whatever we're working on um, you know, in real time. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, I brought with me, um, at least what I'm going to be using is an iPad. You don't necessarily need an iPad. Um, I do have a stylus with me. Uh, the program that I'm going to be using is called Procreate. Uh, now, there's a bunch of different ones out there you can use. Um, you, can, you can find a lot of free apps that you can draw with, so you don't necessarily need Procreate. Procreate does have a one-time cost to it, um, but after that, though, you can use it and accept all the updates and everything um, for as long as you like. Okay, so let's get started in today's tutorial. So I have, like I said, I brought along with me my iPad. Procreate is a really really accessible program. You don't really need to know a whole lot about uh, the different movements or actions or different gestures that you do with your hand to create stuff with. You only really need a stylus or a finger and something to draw with. One of the cool things about Procreate, and we're not endorsing anything here, I'm just talking about this particular software I'm using, is you can set up just about any size that you want. Now, this is important with digital drawing um, because the size of your, your what you're creating on um, is important for print later. So if you want to do something that you want to intend on printing off later, you need to know or educate yourself a little bit about DPI or DP, uh, DPI, what those are, and what does size and dimensions mean when it comes to digital drawing. Now I've set one up that's about 15 inches by 10 inches at 300 DPI. So that means that I could print this off easy at 15 by whatever, and then, but also, uh, blow it up even larger than this because of the high resolution, okay? Now, in Procreate and most drawing apps, you'll see that there are layers, and this is what's, what I'm using over here at the side of these layers. We've conducted a few programs in the past talking about the circle method, probably about all of them, I imagine, uh, anytime I've drawn. Um, and with the circle method, the idea is, and just watch for a second, and let me show you what I mean by this. With the circle method, the idea is that you um, create these shapes first, right? These ovals, circles, different things like that. And then you slowly build upon it, you know, gradually until you form the character that you're wanting to create. In this turn, I'll be do doing like this little person here, right? Big giant eyeballs. Um, but these little ovals and circles help to guide you to create what you're creating. We've also did a program on a light box. Light box works the same way, where you start out with general shapes, lay the paper down on top of the light box, and you trace over it. Now this is similar, um, that method at least, to what layers are, because that's essentially what you're doing. So you see I started out with these ovals first, now I'm going back over it on top of those ovals that I've drawn, and I'm starting to put detail in the drawing now. So that's what I'm doing at this moment. Now I'm doing this on what we call, or what most digital art platforms call, um, layers. And what this means, I'll show you here in a second. So I've got this little character drawn. If I turn this off, you can still see the layer that I started out on. So this shape that I've drawn here is on a separate layer than the detail added above it. And that's the neat thing about Procreate and a lot of these drawing apps is you have these multiple layers so you continue to build upon your drawing. Start out with circles, put a little more detail, a little more detail, a little more detail. And then you have maybe a bunch of layers, but the last one that you do, the last layer you create, will be the finished drawing. All right, so let's get started though, in today's tutorial using this. For today's drawing, I have, of course, my tablet, my stylus, and I'm using a uh, software called Procreate. 
Now Procreate is, is a purchase based um, application so you have to buy it but there's a lot of free ones out there too. I want to show you though how cool and how interesting and different ways you can use this. Now of course you can use the typical way. I have layers here, right? Um, you can use the typical way that I've shown all in the past with drawing ovals and these different types of shapes that you would use and then build upon those shapes gradually uh, putting detail in as you go. So now I have my ovals, the eyes, nose, ears, those sort of things. That's one way to use it. You can use layers to build characters uh, or any drawing. And then the other option though is to get a little bit more advanced with this. Now this is really where I think uh, using a digital platform for drawing uh, comes into play in terms of what you can do with it and expand your abilities. Okay, so for instance this, let's pretend that we were commissioned to create a giraffe on the African uh, um, plains, an, an illustration of that, and we need a reference to go by. What I can do, because I have these layers and I have a bunch of options for adding a whole lot of layers, I can add a photo to this, jump back in here, I can add a photo, one that I've already selected here. I have a bunch of my daughter. There we go. And this is just an image that I pulled off the internet, okay? And I can put this onto my drawing like this, expand it all the way out. And now that's on its own layer. See that? Turn it off and on. I can draw on top of it. Um, I can do whatever I need to do. It basically exists there for me to use, okay? Now the next thing that I can do is search for an image of a giraffe and let's say I did that which I already have and now there's my giraffe you see it moves freely on top of that layer now let's say I wanted to add my giraffe right about there in my drawing something like that okay I can go over to my layers turn it off and on see where I placed it that works okay but what about all the blue sky now, that needs to be erased now because this is on its own layer I can go in now and erase all of these things that I don't need. So all the green, the blue, I can get rid of all that. It's on its own layer, so we're good to go. It doesn't mean we're affecting the background any. We're just creating our composition. Now with composition, what that means is where are you placing the things on your drawing? How are they placed? How are they arranged? And the things on this drawing would be the giraffe. The background includes the trees, the brush, the sun, the sky, that sort of thing. We're going to add a little bit of color here at the very end, but that's mostly going to be to the giraffe, okay? Now watch what happens. I have now this giraffe layer that I can move around, position it maybe on this side or this side. In fact, I think we'll go on this side. And now I have both of these layers. They're ready to be used. Now how can I use these? I don't necessarily trace them. Uh, that's not what I want to do, but I can turn what's called opacity. And that just basically means uh, see-through transparency of a layer. So here's 100% which you can't see through it down to zero which you can't see it at all. So somewhere in the middle we want to use let's say 27% opacity. Now this is on its own layer. I create a new one, a new layer. And now I could go in and sketch out all of the elements that I need for this drawing. So I'm going to go in with a blue color here hopefully. This color and I'll go in and trace these elements. Now just as I normally would with um, sketching it out for um, you know my, my, my drawing using the circle method, I can trace over the giraffe and basically get an idea of where all these elements are without having to trace it. We don't want to trace it but we want to use it though to help kind of guide us and that's what we're doing here. So first thing I'm going to do is just get the basic layout of this giraffe, how it's standing, which is like that, okay. And now look, I have the elements of the brush back here that I can draw. Here's my horizon line. Take it all the way across. I have a tree here. Now, is this necessarily uh, cheating? Um, I would say no because you are creating your own composition based off of a reference and that's what a lot of artists, all artists do. They, they use reference photos all the time. I do constantly off of Google. I'll search or any search uh, engine. I'll go and search for an image 
And when I find an image that I want to use, I'll pull that image and re refer to it using it as a reference. So if you use this as a reference, I don't think it's cheating at all. If you, you know, add to it a little bit, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just tracing over a few of these elements here. So if you have a tablet, you can create compositions with other images. You just basically have to pull those into your tablet, your software, place them onto your, um, your digital paper, we'll call it, and then you sketch over top of it. So now I have this scene that you'd find somewhere on the Sahara or the African plain somewhere, and it's of this giraffe walking. Now let's turn off that main base layer. See, see now what I've traced over? I've created what I need to go by. Now I still need to be able to see this image, the original one, to get an idea, but based off this now, I'll turn the opacity down on what I just drew again. You're gonna see that sort of fade away a little bit. And I'm gonna go in now, I'm gonna zoom in really close. So here's the uh, head of the giraffe. Create an additional layer this time. And this is where the fun part comes in. So basically you can go in now and start to add detail. So we're gonna do a circle, it's a little bit too thick. There we go. I'll put a couple of eyes on my giraffe here, one here, one here, like that. The nose of the giraffe is going to come down, up to the ears. You have the horns. I'd love to know what these are called. I should have looked that up before I did the show, but... We'll call them horns for now. That ear, you can't see the inside of it. So now I have the basis of the head. And I continue down the neck now. This is a little bit tracing, sure, I understand. We're still on that borderline of are we creating or tracing? But once we actually get this image down, we're going to stop using this reference photo. And we're going to then start adding our own detail in there. There's that part to the back, down the back. Here's my tail. The leg extended here. There we go. Now let me turn off both layers except what I just drew. So there's a giraffe, okay? Here's my reference sketch and then here's my reference photo. Now I no longer need the reference photo so much. I have what I've drawn on top of it and I want to keep going with that now. So I'm going to zoom back in again and put some spots on my giraffe. Here and there going down the back, around the neck. Now you can see how we've used this reference photo to go by. We're not copying exactly, we're just using it to help guide us for our composition. You can continually refer back to it though. Now you see there's a lot more spots on this giraffe in the original photo than what I'm putting on mine. I'm just basically going to go down the back of it. And if you have access to a tablet or if you have access to a smartphone even, and there's a lot of free software out there that you can use, like I said, you don't have to pay for something to have a way to draw digitally anymore. But if you do find something out there that you like to use, some sort of app or application that you enjoy using above another, I, I suggest you make sure and at least use one that has the ability to create these layers. Because those layers really, really help you. And after you've drawn something a few times using this method, uh, you'll get better at drawing all general because you, you're, you're creating as you go. See, now watch, I turn off this bottom one, and there's my giraffe. I can zoom in. We can see the giraffe standing there. And now for our composition for the rest of our page. Now for the rest of the page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on the layer I'm on and I'm just going to basically go over this background. And the only thing I'm going to add color to today is going to be the giraffe, but I want a background. So I'm going to put some detail here with the tree, changing it up from what it originally started as. Now when you paint digitally, it's so much different than using 
you know, paper. Um, there's a different feel to it. Now you can find out there, there's screens that you can apply to your tablets. They give it a paper feel. And a lot of people who write, a lot of authors I know who are into creating their own stories, they don't want to type it. They like to write it out, long form, longhand. You can find um, actual paper film to go over top of your tablet, believe it or not. And it basically what it does is it, whenever you draw over top of it or write over top of it using a stylus, it, it gives it a little bit of a grain, like a grainy feel. Not, not really bad, nothing that kind of takes away or makes it feel weird. But it's just enough, though, that it feels like you're writing on something. Um, well, you are writing on something physical, but it, it feels like paper. Okay. Here's my sun. I'll put a little bit of detail in here for like the clouds, sort of. Now, the idea for this is we're continually building up on it, just like we've done multiple, many, many times in the workshop here where we start out with one thing and it turns into something else, okay? We're not leaving that premise at all. We're still doing the same thing we normally do. Start out with basic shapes, build upon those basic shapes until we have something different. Now, you can see how it's starting to form. It's starting to build slowly upon itself here. It's turning into something different. Now let's focus on the giraffe though. Now, how we have time, we would be able to go over every bit of this the same way. But now, I'm, look, I'm, I'm working on a different layer now. So I started out with this. This went to this, then this. And now we're going a little bit further. We're going to take it into a solid black color. So I'm getting my pen ready. I'm going to zoom in. Now, you're tracing over your own work here. This time, I'm doing it in black. Okay. I'm going to trace over my giraffe using this black you can continually make changes to it if you need to like i just did with the neck there let me turn the opacity down on this layer below it there we go now you can see what i'm doing better over top and just like we normally would do with a pen we trace over our lines i think i'm going to change the eyes up a little bit here Instead of making them so big, I'm going to maybe make this a sleepy giraffe. Something like that. There we go. Go down the neck. Now I think I want to make the neck just a little thinner here at the top. So see, even though we started out inspired by that first photograph we put down, we're changing it. We're making it our own. I know some artists that their ability to draw is is good, but you know they they really create some amazing pieces using uh, references for composition, and they sell them. They actually sell those on you know those different different types of uh, social media sites for artists, DeviantArt. Um, Instagram, those sorts of things, you get commissions. And the folks that are commissioning them know that they're basically pulling these compositions from online through photographs, but they still hire them. So don't think that you have to come up with this in your own head and then, you know, create it on paper. You can, you're still coming up with it in your own mind, but you're just using inspiration from sources. I'm not saying copy and sell it. I'm not saying that at all. That's not good. I, don't think, I think anyone would agree with me on that, that you know, if you copy someone else's work or photograph or something like that and try to sell it, that's, that's not good at all. But you can use reference photos. That's what you do as an artist. You have to have reference. Artists before the um, advent of uh, the Internet and what else is going on now would have to go out and take photographs of whatever it was they were wanting to uh, create. So they had like a, basically a photo album and each one would be dedicated to a different type of element. Some would be street signs, some would be, you know, um, trees or something. So now we have our giraffe drawn. Our background is still sketched in. We're not gonna put a lot of detail to that. I'm gonna show you how to paint with this now. And Procreate comes with 
some pretty cool um, options for painting brushes. Now digital brushes are a lot different, of course, than using traditional brush. One of the benefits of drawing or painting digitally is that you can go in and you can erase. You can get rid of mistakes. Um, if I go outside the line here, all I have to do is go and erase it and I'll be upset. This is a type of um, brush that's almost like a watercolor or gouache type feel or look. And all I'm going to do is go over the entire surface of this giraffe on its own layer. And I'm working underneath it. As you can see, when, as I'm coloring this, I'm actually coloring underneath the layer above it. Okay, it's just like a layer cake. So the top layer is still the line art. So now you can see the color underneath it. And you can always reference back to this photograph if you need to remember what a giraffe looks like, which I do sometimes. So let's take this off and look. So we have light and brown and dark brown. Okay. Zoom back in. Work on the head a little bit more now. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to digital painting and drawing using a tablet. And I'd love to be able to do more of these videos for you here uh, in the workshop. We'll see what happens, um, but we may do that because I think a lot of students are moving more towards digital. I'm going to use brown. Now I'm going to use a darker brown. I'm going to go in this time for the spots. You can see what happens here. I'm going to create a new layer. Now I'm going to color all my spots in this darker brown. Now in a minute I'll turn off all the layers and turn them on one by one so you can kind of see what happens. And you can really get technical with this. You can spend a lot of time getting all those little details in if you want to. Okay, It's a matter of preference or how detailed you want to get with the drawing. We are, we are limited on time with how much we can do during the workshop, but um, I think it will give you at least an idea on how to use these applications in a way that you probably may not have thought of in the past. Maybe you have. Just please, everyone remember though, don't copy work and sell it as your own. I think that doesn't need to be said. Everybody knows that. But for the head here, ear, there we go. So you can see now I have this almost like a light cream color that I'm using for the body. And we'll finish up with a little bit of tan underneath. This you could probably not even be able to see very well. Then I'll turn off all these layers one by one so you can see how they work. Okay. There we go. Up to the head. So watch what happens now. Let's give him, let's give him or her some blue eyes. A little bit smaller. There we go. There we is. I zoom out. Now, if I turn off the top layer, you're going to see just the color. Turn it back on. Turn off the brown. There we have our line art. There's our underdrawing. There's our first go at it with our original art, original picture. I'm sorry. So now we'll turn these on one by one. This, to this, to this, to there, okay? So digital art is an amazing medium, and it's something that is continually, just as technology enhances and just as, um, you know, things are changing, uh, it's getting different every time. Um, there's a new update that comes out where an, uh, an app will allow you to do something where it didn't before. So. I encourage you, if you have participated today, you didn't need a digital tablet to do so, but we'd love to see your work. You can send those into us at piketv99 at gmail.com. If you do, we'll share it here on the next workshop. Please include, if you don't care, a little bit about yourself, at least maybe uh, if, you go, if you're a student, where do you go to school, maybe your age, and uh, we'll share your work. So thank you for participating today. I had a great time. There's so much more to explore when it comes to digital painting and drawing. Hopefully we'll be able to do that a little bit more in the future here on the Art Workshop. So until next time, I'm Christopher Epling on behalf of Pike TV. Keep growing.